episode three of Hayes Hobby Video Log. I uh, hope you guys have been enjoying it so far. Uh, I've done the first introduction, just showing showing you my teams um, and my hobby area, uh, the hobby dungeon um, here at Hay Manor. Uh, episode two is just a short one on conversions. So today um, I'm going to try um, and focus on a new model that's come out. So you'll all probably be aware that Harry the Hat Hallahan, a new season two Union model. Um, has been released, the Guild Ball version has been released um, on the Friday just gone. So I was lucky enough to get my hands on the model on Friday and I've spent Friday evening um, painting up, building, painting and videoing my progress. You may have seen some posts up on the Guild Ball Informer Facebook page. So I'll just do a quick introduction to that and then straight into those videos so that you can see what I've done. Um, I spent Friday evening so it took me a couple of hours from the unboxing all the way through the building and painting uh, and he's to a fairly average tabletop standard as you'll see in the video coming up so I hope you like and I hope you enjoy and I've been getting a fair few views of these videos so please comment let me know how you think I'm getting on and if there's anything else that you would like to see I have a card here in front of me for Harry so I'll quickly run down his stats and abilities if any of you guys haven't seen this yet and my initial thoughts on on him. I've not had him on the table yet, obviously him just being released. Um, but because the model is so amazing and his hat is so cool, he joins the big hat club along with Rage. And um, I'm being a union player myself, I'm keen to get him on the table. And I think I'll probably play him in, in games, even if he is rubbish, just because the model is so cool. So we'll just go down the stat lines. He's move 5-7. He's got attack of four base, he has a kick of two six inches, defense three plus, armor one, and influence one four with a one inch melee. So stat line, pretty average, uh, nothing really jumps out there. Attack four, doesn't look great to start off with, but he does seem fairly fast, five seven. He is only on a 30 mil base, but I kind of view him as a big guy, as you'll see from the stats and stuff and the playbooks coming up. He has 19 wounds. Uh, but uh, defence 3, armour 1, and only generates one point of influence for the team, uh, is where I think he looks fairly weak at the moment. Also a little surprised, I know Union have a lot of 2 inch melee models, um, and people will be glad that he's not 2 inches, but for me, carrying his big spanner and looking at the model, um, I think he would have fit being a 2 inch. But there you go, that's just me, bias, Union bias. So his um, character... His, uh, we'll go down his character traits first, which is now on the back, uh, the new Season 2 cards. So character traits, selective as all Union are, uh, apart from Black Heart and Coin. Uh, he can play for Alchemists, Brewers, Butchers and Engineers. Uh, I have also started playing Alchemists, so I'm quite keen to have him in an Alchemist lineup as well. The thing I've found with Alchemists so far, apart from Compound, is they're relatively squishy. So he does seem like a model that has a place there, just for soaking up a bit of damage, being a bit of a tar pit, and um, we'll see why as we go through his traits. Um, crazy, so the first one is crazy, so the same as um, Cosset uh, and Greed. Uh, he has the ability to take three damage to gain three tack. So that actually puts him on tack seven which then puts him into another sort of ballpark with regards to, to damage and playbook results. Uh, Rising Anger is the second one, so we see this on Ghast as well. So the first time that this model is damaged by an enemy model each turn, the friendly team gains two momentum. So this is quite, quite good for uh, trying to dictate your opponent's activations. Uh, they're not going to want to hit Harry at the start of the turn, or at any point throughout the turn, I guess, to give you you an extra, or give me an extra two momentum, uh, which can be used for counter attacks and things like that. And then he has a heroic play called Inspiring Hat, um, which fits the model brilliantly. Inspiring Hat, three inch aura. While within this aura, friendly models gain plus one attack. So that's really, really good. Uh, coupled with other abilities that give out plus attack, um, Commanding Aura is the first one with Black Art. Um, any models that have singled out, he would work brilliantly with. So that seems pretty cool. It is a heroic play, so it's not on all the time. He has to activate that from the momentum. 
but it does work quite nicely with rising anger because if somebody's hitting him giving you the momentum to then do his heroic when he activates sounds pretty cool he is an attacking midfielder so he is designed to be playing a bit further up the pitch rage i think is also an attacking midfielder so those two together with their brilliant hats making sort of a an attacking duo maybe will work fairly well also he doesn't have um he doesn't have a state so he's unknown which if we move on through the seasons i've heard there been talk potentially of doing some sort of world cup where people play for their nations or their states um, he does add to the unknowns which i think is a relatively strong one we have simon kraken um blackheart coin i think might even be unknown but um, quite a few models are unknown. Mist is unknown. So that makes quite a strong lineup with Harry as well. So onto his playbook. He has only one column all the way along, so he doesn't have options on different hits. He has um, seven columns, so with his crazy, um, it won't be that easy to wrap around. So the first one is one damage. Second one is a tackle, neither of which are momentous. So you're wanting to get three hits just to generate momentum, which again probably is why he has something like rising anger just another way of generating momentum but on three hits he can do a momentous two inch push on four hits two damage and then five hits a momentous two damage and two inch push so this is where he really sort of comes into his own on on the five and seven hits six hits three damage and seven hits three damage and a two inch push so not that many options, no way of triggering character plays, doesn't have any character plays off the play, but seems to be there just to soak up damage, push people around, reposition enemy models. Um, very similar, I think, to Avis from looking at his cards to start with. Both of those two like just to push models around, re reposition them, single players out and let you gang up on them. So he's two character plays, which I find quite interesting. The first one is Goad, so we see this on marbles at the moment. Cost one, range six inches, and it's it just stays on that model till the end of the turn. While this model is on the pitch, the target enemy model that you've casted on can only move directly towards this model during an advance. The character play can only be used once per turn. So I've seen this used to devastating effect. I don't think it's used fairly widely throughout the game. There's not that many models that have it. But if you can go first in a turn, and the other team sort of, for example, has a model set up to run and score, if you can goad them with Harry and then run it even further away, back up the pitch away from your own goal, they can't move that model with an advance towards the goal. So they can still do repositions, they can still do where they go or dodges and things, but it would seriously limit where they're able to go. And again, if you're wanting to um, move models away from the action, for example, Ox, if for the Butchers, get his aura away from the rest of his team. If you goad him with Harry, and make him come towards Harry and move all of your team away, then, then that's also going to make him slightly less effective. And then the other one, he has his Molotov, which goes with the, the Molotov cocktails he has on his belt. So he can throw a Molotov uh, eight inches, and it costs one influence to do. Target enemy model suffers the burning condition, and you can only use it once per turn. So there's not that many people. Mercury, uh, Flask, Mainspring, there's a couple of models that give out burning but not that many so i'm quite i quite like to see um the extra burning effect coming into play here also just then so go to molotov i've just thought actually would would work quite well together if you start his activation go to an enemy model that's six inches away then move him having another five inches away from that and then well not five inches another couple of inches away throw a molotov at them so they get minus two, minus two move, then they will have to come towards you, but they probably won't be able to reach you. So you've basically nullified them for the whole turn if there's none of your other models near them that they can hit. So that, that might work quite well. They've all cost one, so one dice unless you bonus time. But overall, um, I quite like the look of him. Nothing, nothing spectacular, but uh, I think he'll be quite hard to take down. He'll be quite handy, and we'll see how he plays into any sort of other Season 2 releases that we get, and just another option for the Union, and a cool model. So I'm pretty pleased overall with that. 
and now I'll put you on to my painting videos uh, and we'll see you next week on episode four. Thanks guys. So here we are back with Harry Built. So I've just stuck his, his arm on. Um, fantastic looking model. Uh, very imposing with his amazing hat. Um, the detail again is awesome. So you can see there. Um, and he's got some Molotovs on his belt. Uh, I need to clip off that bit on his spanner. Uh, and then for the basing, I've literally just stuck on um, a couple of pieces of slate and some little rubble. Um, and so all I use for that, I've just got a box with some slate in and then some rubble. I've just picked these up from Element Games for a couple of quid. Uh, not expensive, but you can find them outside. You can use anything. It doesn't have to be stuff that you've bought. So now we're just going to spray paint in black. So I just um, get an old cloth. As you can see, I get a bit on the wall as well. Um, and then I'll just spray him. I tend to just use uh, Citadel Chaos Black. I like that because other black spray paint I've, I've used comes out a bit shiny, but this one's quite matte, so I do quite like, like that. So I'll spray this and then I'll come back um, when I've put a few bits of base coat down on him. Um, and I think what I'll do is I'll actually time it for you just so that you can see how long I'm actually spending on the model. It'd be quite interesting. I've not timed myself before, but I reckon I can get this model done in a couple of hours. So we'll see how that goes with the timing. So I'll join you again in a bit after I've put some base coats down. So we're back now with Harry um, spray painted uh, undercoated black. Um, so uh, I'm about to start painting him. Um, as you can see, I stick all the models together, stick it on a base, do the base before I start painting. I know a lot of people do bits individually and then stick them together afterwards. But for me, uh, I'm not really bothered about painting the bits that you can't see. So for me, it's just a bit of a wasted effort if you're painting lots of bits of models that um, people aren't going to see anyway. But again, that's just me, personal preference. So again, awesome looking model. I've laid out in front of me the extent of the paints and colours that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to start with his skin, so I'm going to put two, two tones on, rat skin flesh to start with, and then Kislev afterwards. Then I'm going to do his trousers in a dark bluey colour, Necron Abyss, like all the other Union that I've done. Then I'm going to paint his shirt, I think, in a cream colour. Then I've got Monster Brown for all of the... Um, he's got like a, a harness on, holding some Molotovs and a belt. Um, and holding, he's got a bit of a metal chest plate and groin plate holding that together, so that'll be in brown. Then I've got my pinky purple, my Union pinky purple, which I think I'm going to do his hat in, just so that it stands out the most. That's the only other bit of the model that will be properly coloured. And then I've got two different um, two different silvers, bulk and metal and chainmail, old Games Workshop stuff for his um, spanner thing. Uh, and then I've got um, Orc Hide Shade and a tiny bit of Scorpion Green just for his Molotovs, we'll see how that looks. Then I've got some grey, which is just for the base, uh, and black again for the rim of the base. And then I might put a bit of Rust colour on his uh, on his spanner, because it's a bit old looking. And then I'm just going to wash the lot in Agrax uh, and potentially put a bit of blood on the end afterwards. Uh, so that's it. That's the extent of the stuff I'm going to do. Uh, I'm not going to do layers and layers and layers. I'm just going to put probably one coat of each on and then wash it at the end and we'll see how that turns out. So as promised, just to prove to you that it only takes me a couple of hours, I've got my stopwatch here. Uh, and I am going to start now and we will see. I'll come back after I've done the base coats and we'll see how long that's taken. Uh, if I can get it to work. There you go. See you so in a guys, bit. we're back. And as promised, five minutes and five seconds has gone. And I have managed to get uh, the first coat of his skin done. So it's just his arms and his face uh, when it comes into focus. And a few bits of his chest poking out between his tight shirt. <laughs> so I've not been too, uh, too bothered about going in the lines. Uh, or, to be honest... Um, having to worry about how smooth the coat is because I'm going to put another layer of a lighter colour on anyway going over the top 
And at the end of the day, for me, when I've washed it and stuff anyway, I quite like having slightly different um, tones and shades on the model, so it just adds to the shadow and the depth. You can see I'm going to have to do something with his moustache, paint that black again. But that's five minutes gone just to get that, that layer down. So we'll move on again um, and see how long it takes to do the next. Hi guys, so you probably won't uh, really tell the difference. I've only added uh, another lighter layer on the skin um, and it literally took me a minute. Um, I've got the watch to show you in a second. Um, but it's just pulling together the skin tones. Um, again, don't worry if it's a bit patchy because I'm going to be washing it all to bring tying all, all together uh, at the end anyway. And as you can see, uh, I've taken about a minute to do that. Um, and I will move on to just doing the trousers now, I think, in the Neckwon Abyss. So I'll join you again when I've done um, that. So I've just actually taken him off um, the thing I was painting him on. Uh, just because a few people on Facebook are asking about uh, his scale now, the new model. So as you can see, he has been scaled down considerably. I think the first iteration for Infamy, he was uh, he struggled to fit on a 30mm base and he looked ridiculously big compared. So Guild Ball have taken that on board and produced a new model themselves. So here he is. So all I've really done here, I've, I've not come in and recorded after I've done his pants because there's not really much to see. Uh, they are just a slightly different uh, colour. They are now sort of a dark blue instead of black. But I have also done um, his uh, cream shirt. So again, like with the skin, uh, I'm not too bothered at this stage uh, about the smooth coverage. As you can see as I zoom in, uh, it's, it is a little bit patchy that close. But by the time I've finished uh, and washed it and all and stuff anyway, uh, I think it actually adds to the effect, uh, as well as me just being lazy. Um, for, for tabletop, for me, uh, it's good enough just really with one or two coats. Uh, and because I water my paints down fairly, uh, quite a lot, um, I sort of paint on, I start painting one side, work all the way around, and by the time I got to the, the start again, it is dry, so I just sort of... Um, paint over it again and add another the bit of a layer on and it adds to the depth and the colour and stuff and again I've not really I've not covered all of the bits I do like to leave sort of slightly black bits around the edges just to to, to get the contrast between the skin and the um, and the, the shirt there so not particularly um, clean painting uh, I have gone over the edges quite a bit but it will all come together nicely and especially from a distance like here um, which is the sort of eye line on the table. That's probably even closer than you'd see on the table. He looks perfectly fine to me. And uh, he does look like a bit of a grubby chap anyway. He's not really going to be that bothered. Um, he obviously hasn't been using personal white whites. Um, so there we go. I'll come back again. I'm going to go move on and do all the browns. So I'll do his harness and his boots uh, and probably his wristbands in sort of a brown colour. Uh, and then I'll join you back in again. Oh, just so that you can see, uh, I'm now on um, 11 minutes and 57 seconds, so just under 12 minutes. Um, so I've done all of that in 12 minutes. So we'll come back and see how long it takes me to do the next stage. So back with Speedy Gonzalez. Uh, I've now I'm on nearly 19 minutes. So it didn't take long for that one. Uh, I did start off trying to be quite careful, getting all the browns, especially around, he's got a few chest plates, um, but in the end I ended up just painting it all uh, brown, and I'm going to pick out the buckles and the metals uh, in the next stage. So here we've actually done, I've done his boots, and I've done his uh, wristbands and his harness. So as with previous layers, I'm sorry for those that have painting OCD because uh, I'm not really painting in the lines and I'm not being particularly smooth um, but it works for me and again zoomed in it probably looks dreadful but when you're uh, at this sort of distance and especially when we do the wash at the end you'll see it all come together um, this is what works for me uh, I'm going to attempt I think to do his purpley pink hat next uh, and also I will probably do the metals so we'll see how long that takes me uh, I'm going to pick out the metals on his chest plate 
think he's got some uh, shin pads, metal shin pads and knee supports and he's obviously got his big spanner. So we'll do all them next. Uh, just in the bulk and metal probably before I do a few little chain mail lighter bits in areas. Uh, so I'll come back when I've done that. So we're back after 27 minutes and 10 seconds. Uh, I've actually not changed my water yet. This is my painting palette. Um, very messy on my water. Uh, I noticed while I was painting that last section uh, and the metals that I'd missed a bit uh, of the brown on the boot. So luckily it was still wet. So I've just uh, done a tiny little touch up on the boots. But here we have, uh, here we have Harry with his pink hat now, pinky purple hat. So as you can see from the other models I've got, um, it is kind of a pinky, a pinky purple, but it's a dark, it's very dark purple. So that's actually quite good because with a black undercoat, it's quite hard to get a really bright colour. Um, but it works uh, for this sort of technique, a bit of a dirty, grubby technique. If you were wanting something really bright and vibrant, you're probably better off with a um, with a white or a grey undercoat and then build the layers up very very slowly or do what I've done and then um, paint on cream or white before you then put on the colour of your choice but for me again uh, there's a kind of a theme going when it slightly tries to focus um, it's all a bit um, a bit grubby I've gone over the lines uh, you can't really see sorry uh, but I've done his the metal on his legs and knees. Hopefully it will come back uh, into focus next time. Uh, and we've got uh, his uh, spanner. Uh, and I've also done a tiny, 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 tiny whiff of black for his moustache just to give it some of a definement there. But as you can see at a close-up, uh, I've got a bit of silver all over the place. Got a bit of pink on his finger, but hopefully when we wash it, uh, it will go away and you won't be able to tell, really. So, uh, not the sharpest painter, but this is how uh, I do it. And at this stage, it kind of, I kind of always seem and feel a bit disappointed because uh, of how the model looks, but this, I, the magic formula is this Agrax Earth Shade. As soon as you put all that stuff on, it seems to solve a lot of problems. Uh, it's a very cheater's way of um, of making a model look better. So for now, it does. I do agree that it looks a bit naff, but I will come back. I've got only got a tiny bit left still to do, which is the Molotovs on his belt. Um, apologies for the focus; it's been rubbish. So we'll come back when I've done that. Uh, and then I'll do the base uh, in grey. Um, a bit of fortress grey. Um, tidy up with black, just to any of the bits that I've missed on uh, that I've gone over on the base, and I'll come back at that point before I do the magical wash, and we'll see where we are with that. So, guys, as you can see, we're still on the clock. We're on thirty, nearly thirty-seven minutes. It, um, still counting down. Um, I'm still on the same wire. Uh, what I've actually done now is I've done. Uh, there's a bit better light over here. Um, so we've actually uh, done some of his hat. What, what I've noticed is um, on his hat there seems to be some sort of a card in the top of his hat. So I've cracked open the, gray, uh, the cream again and I've just done that bit of card. And I've taken this opportunity to, um, as you can see in the light, to just go over his... Um, his shirt a bit more um, so I've actually not you can see I've done his uh, molotovs I've not I've just picked out some of the um, some of the bits with a bit of a um, a stronger cream color sorry if I'm talking funny I've got a paintbrush in my mouth um, but I've not gone right into the edges I like to keep some of the edges a bit darker so you can see some of the shading starting to build up some of the shadows but he's he's starting to come along uh, and I've done the base now I've just been a bit of a messy painted it grey I'm going to tidy up the uh, the rim with black um, and I've actually put you can't really tell but I've on all the silver 
I've done a bit of uh, mithril silver, is it called? Just the light silver, anyway. You can't really tell, uh, so that's a bit of a waste of time, but I've done it all the same. Uh, I do like how the Molotovs are coming along. I've done them dark green, and then I just mixed in a bit of the lime green to make it a lighter colour, and then finally just used a third coat of very light green. So even whilst talking to you, the clock's been running, uh, and we are now on 38 minutes. So coming up to 40 minutes, uh, pretty much all of the base coat is down. Um, the only thing I'm not really happy with at this stage is this hat. Uh, I don't think the pinky purple is taken too well, but I am going to still refrain from doing anything else. I'm going to, there are a lot of details I've missed out as well, um, which will probably again drive some of you OCD guys a bit insane, but it's it works for me. Uh, so I will come back, I'm going to let it all dry a little bit now, stop the clock, and then I'm going to give it a wash back on the clock, and I'll come back when that wash that first wash has dried. Sometimes I give it multiple washes, but I do go quite thick on it. It's quite a heavy wash. So we'll see if it manages to change how he looks. Hopefully, what the wash will do is it will pick out um, a lot of the detail on his face and on his, um, on his clothes. So we'll see how that works out in a second. Uh, right, guys, I'm back for the final instalment, you'll be pleased to know. So I have uh, just done a wash. Um, and I've also um, let that dry and then just done a little bit of rust effect and blood um, on his um, spannery thing and on the base. So here you can see him with the other uh, lovely Union guys. So this is my... Uh, I've paused my stopwatch as well on 48 minutes. Uh, there you go as proof. So it's taken less than an hour. Uh, I must say there was a little bit of mixing time, just moving paint from pot to my lovely palette, which probably wasn't on the clock, so you could probably add on another 10, 15 minutes, so pushes just over an hour. But that is pretty much tabletop standard. Um, I, I'm happy that that's all right for the tabletop. Um, I need to varnish him because uh, he's in metal so he doesn't chip and I might put a bit of highlights on at some stage in the future just to pick out the brown around his um, his waistband um, and maybe some of his pants to make them a different tone but I'm pleased um, how he's turned out um, I like his Molotovs uh, and then his, just his, his spanner you probably can't really see uh, I can try to take him into the light a bit more and see if that makes a difference. Uh, so he's got a bit of rust on his um on his spanner. Uh, but that's it. So that's what you could sort of achieve in around about an hour. Obviously those um, pro expert painters will be able to do a much better job but in terms of just um, getting it out there and getting it on the table um, I think that's that's good enough for me so there you go guys that's kind of how I paint um, it's taken me about an hour it's been interesting to do it on on the clock because the way I tend to paint is I do sort of 10 minutes here and there. I don't really sit down for long stints so um, I just come keep popping back so I never really know how long it takes uh, all in all uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this and please um, share, comment, like and subscribe and let me know what it is what else you'd like to see um, if nobody puts in a comment I'll probably paint up a couple of other models next time maybe engineers or brewers um, and just show you uh, some stages again just to show that this wasn't a fluke and we'll go from there cheers guys happy guild balling